Congresswoman, thank you so much for coming back on the show tonight. Um, House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy pulled all five of his picks from the January 6th Select Committee after Speaker Nancy Pelosi rejected Jim Banks and Jim Jordan. Earlier, it sounded like she was feeling uh, annoyed that people were suggesting she add Republicans like Adam Kinzinger to the committee along with Liz Cheney. Do you need a Kinzinger on that committee? You already have Liz Cheney. And it's not as if any of these Republicans is ever going to be happy with the composition of this committee. Why not just get on with it and get the investigation done? They had their chance for a bipartisan commission. I feel like Democrats keep bending over backwards. They had their chance at an independent bipartisan commission with equal subpoena power, equal numbers. Uh, they took uh, their ball and went home. Uh, so I'm not surprised at the uh, temper tantrums that Mr. McCarthy engages in. Uh, and I'm very proud of the speaker. She made a difficult, thoughtful decision, but it was the right decision. It's been six months since the insurrection. The American people deserve to know the facts and circumstances and let the truth take us where it may. So I think the, the uh, speaker did the right thing. Uh, the leader has lost all credibility. He's spoken out of both sides of his mouth. She got hurt. He really didn't Holy have an interest Holy in making sure that we get to the facts and circumstances. It's very clear he does not want this investigation to take place. He's playing partisan games. Yeah. Uh, no, he doesn't, clearly. Uh, speaking of January the 6th, Washington Post reporters Phil Rucker and Carol Glennix released, uh, they released new audio of their interview with former President Trump for their book, I Alone Can Fix It. Here's some of what he said about the attack on the Capitol. Have a listen. What we're trying to understand is not, not blame, not, not castigate. No, we want to understand what did you want when you said go up there? What would you have dreamed? I would have said that, that you will show ushered in by the police. I mean, in all fairness, the Capitol Police were ushering people in. The Capitol Police were very friendly. You know, they were hugging the kids. You don't see that. But in there's some plenty places. of tape on that, too. In you know, because the Capitol Police were, that's the way it is. Um, but I wanted, I mean, personally, what I wanted is what they wanted. They showed up. I want what they want. Um, he also makes up a lot of stuff, as you know. Do you think the select committee should call Donald Trump to testify under oath? Uh, and who else would you like to see subpoenaed? Well, let me comment on that rambling lunacy uh, that we just heard. And it, every time we hear these kinds of words from a former president of the United States, certainly it's shocking, but it is not surprising. What everybody needs to pay attention to is the elected leaders who are clinging to these lies who are clinging to these incoherent lunatic statements. I was there on the 6th. There was not kissing and hugging. Our lives were saved by Capitol Police, who some of them lost their lives, more than 100 of them injured. Uh, so absolutely, we should yes. bring anybody who has any information. I have volunteered. I said, if I have anything to offer you, because I was witness I could hear some of the sounds. But, uh, if there's any, but would you I specifically offer... want to see Donald Trump be subpoenaed? Uh, I would like to, because what I've always asked is, what did Donald Trump know, and when did he know it? That famous refrain, sadly, from the Watergate days. Yes. Uh, what has happened here in one six, of course, uh, overshadows it. Remember what this was: the greatest attack on our democracy uh, since the Civil War, the greatest attack on our capital. Uh, Americans attacking Americans, using a Trump flag, using yes. an American flag to beat police officers. So it's lunacy from the president. He could be subpoenaed if he came forward. He would make as much sense as he just did in that nonsensical statement. Uh, but certainly we need to know and others around him will be able to tell us what was he doing? What did he know? When did he know it? And why did he not <laughs> interfere once it began? We do know from his previous lawsuits and depositions that he's done that he's a very different character when he's under oath. Surprising that. Uh, Congresswoman, President Joe Biden spoke about the filibuster last night in his CNN town hall. Have a listen to a bit of what he said. I don't want the debate to only be about whether or not we have a filibuster or exceptions to the filibuster or the, going back to the way the filibuster had to be used before. But isn't that the only way you're going to get it done right now? No, I don't believe that. 
But that's not true, is it, Congresswoman? With respect, the president is just wrong. There is no way for the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act to get passed in the Senate and to get to his desk for signature without getting rid of the filibuster, or at least doing a carve-out for voting rights bills. Well, Mehdi, you probably know this about me, but I learned about uh, the filibuster and its Jim Crow vestiges. Uh, and I have come out against the filibuster. I'm very respectful of the president and certainly his service in the Senate. And so I listen to him when he is concerned uh, that maybe we will wind up speaking only of the filibuster and not moving forward on important things like the American Jobs Act, like infrastructure investment, like protecting voting rights. But I am against the filibuster. I think we have to look at it, the historical roots. Uh, you know, our founders uh, put some important uh, I think four different episodes in our Constitution where a supermajority is required. Most recently, we saw this demonstrated with the impeachment that I had the honor, solemn duty to be a part of, where a supermajority of the Senate was required for conviction. I respect that of the Constitution and the founders who put that important provision in. We know that the filibuster is a technique that was really brought in uh, in Jim Crow. Uh, and it was to satisfy Southern uh, senators uh, who were worried about the effects of equal rights, of civil rights, of voting rights. It's time we recognize that and, and, and end the irony of that Jim Crow vestige actually standing in the way of the urgent need to protect our voting rights right now. Yes. Indeed, well said. It just seems so bizarre that Republicans at a state level can pass voter repression with simple majorities, but in D.C. you need to have 60 votes to stop it. It just seems bizarre to me. Congresswoman Dean, thank you for taking that stance. Thank you for coming on the show tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.